nation of, of believing Christian fools. See, the problem with America is that we take our Christianity wrongly. We take our Judaism wrongly in this country. You want me to spend 15 hours on how Christianity and Judaism have been hijacked by liberals? I can do that if you like. They're not even teaching the religion anymore. They're teaching some social contract that wasn't even written by God. Nor by Abraham, nor by Isaac, nor by Moses. Certainly not by Jesus. They've distorted the entire meaning of Christianity. And by the way, if this breed of pacifist Christianity, this strain, had been rampant in America in the 1930s, you'd be speaking German or you'd be a lampshade. I'll be back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or Swiss America. <laughs> deployed overseas, it's tough. And uh, even though we've been able to reduce the number of folks who are deployed in Turn this places like Iraq... I can't listen to him for one second. If we had a legitimate government, he would have been thrown out a long time ago and investigated. He has the nerve to go on vacation, talk and use the Marines in, in Kaneohe Naval Air Station, I believe, as a backdrop for his double double agent operations. When I say double agent, I mean everything he does is undermining America's values and everything he does is undermining our ability to win this war. That's what I mean. Write it down. Now, the man who put him in office, according to those of us who study this, is George Soros, a billionaire money trader in the temple of uh, America, the temple of democracy, took this man in from the Nazis, and he's rewarding us by doing everything he can to destroy this country and the world. George Soros created the Arab Spring. He funded it. He broke the borders of Europe. He's flooding Europe with Syrians. He's flooding America with Mexicans. He's flooding America with Muslims. Anything he can do to destroy this nation, he has done, in my estimation. And now he has the nerve to write an editorial in a newspaper in England that hysterical anti-Muslim reaction is not good. So here's what some people write to that article. They write things like this. I did not read this subversive evil man's bile. He's a vile creature. Another one says, children watching their parents being beheaded. Children being raped and buried alive. I'm sorry, but it caused hysterical outbursts from people. Rage in me, I'll never forget these kids. I'm very anti-Muslim, he writes, allowing this to occur in their faith. Trump is our only hope to destroy these people. Now, here's one that I'd like to read to you from a comment, commentary. George Soros cannot lose the presidency. If Trump were to ultimately be elected, the entire Soros agenda would be immediately deactivated, along with the entire Soros machine. You hear this? By the way, this is the man who funded the riots in Ferguson, Missouri. This is the man who people say made his first fortune by turning in his own Jewish countrymen in Hungary when the Nazis marched in. I, I can't confirm that one. I've been looking. And now he financially supports the fundamental transformation of America. The Dems are already hitting a factor of 9-5 right now with a year left before Trump wipes the stage of all of them, someone writes. They are now throwing the puppet master out in the media to try and tear down Trump, Soros being the Trump puppet master. Soros controls the White House via puppet number one, Valerie Jarrett, and puppet number two, Barry Soetro. Billionaire on billionaire, let the games begin. My money is on Trump. He will drill this you-know-what into the dirt. Unbelievable to me. So now you're listening to these lies from George Soros? You're listening to a man who has destroyed Europe with a flood of refugees who will never be assimilated? And the only hope for Europe is a complete right-wing revolution? When the men of America and the men of Europe come to understand that the survival of their... And here he is, Michael Savage. If you missed the first hour, I, I pity you. It was a hot one. It was a good one. It was a real one. It was a live one. Live from Beverly Thrills, California. Traveling. First show in my new studio. It's my third Beverly Thrills studio. 
in my career. And I'm saying, here, this, the sound quality is excellent. Aside from broken equipment here and there, which will work. It's, I mean, like one computer was invaded with a virus while I was away. You can't believe what I've been putting up with. A fax machine. Spend millions of dollars, thousands of dollars. It doesn't work right. A, a fax machine they couldn't get right with an ink cartridge. They still have the training cartridge from the store. And then there's six replacement cartridges. They're all the wrong ones. You hear this? Some engine, I mean, really unbelievable. I mean, what I got to put up with. But the main thing is that the mic works, call screener works, my brain works. I already violated my diet. You know, you get a tense at a Greek salad and a corned beef sandwich. That's like the yin and the yang. The angel over my left shoulder said, don't eat meat, have the salad. I said, all right, have the Greek salad. The devil on my right shoulder said, "Ah, go have a corned beef sandwich. You're under a lot of pressure. I had a corned beef sandwich. I had both. It was a yin-yang lunch. And I compensate for a little fish oil, but I'm not taking them on the road because I got the wrong brand and I, I get the ga the uh, the oil taste. I, I'd rather have high cholesterol and eat one of those things. Horrible taste. Forty percent of Americans say the terrorists are winning. No kidding. Yeah, Americans. What do they know? And hey, what there? Huh? What terrorists? Huh? Send where? Send who? Nino? know? All I know is what uh, Hollywood and the baseball and forty percent of Americans say the terrorists are winning. Forty. As what, a people with a brain 100% know that we're losing because of old Barry, old Barry boy. 17% of Americans say they have a great deal of confidence that President O can protect the nation. While 20% say they have not much confidence in O, and 30% say they have none at all in President O. Are you joking? Why don't you ask this question? Do you think the president should be impeached now or f seven years ago? Okay, let's do it this way. When do you think President Obama should be impeached? Now? A year ago? Two years ago? Three years ago? Four years ago? Five years ago? Six years ago? Or seven years ago? Seven years ago? Okay. Make that the poll. See what the answers are. 10% say seven years ago. 20% say six years ago. 30% say five years ago. You want a poll? That's, by the way, that's a CNN ORC poll. Foreign poll. 40% say the terrorists are winning. Are you joking? Ask the guys on the front line who is winning and why we are losing. Ask them. Ask the brave men who risk their lives every day, whether it's here in America, taking down the vermin, taking them down on highways all across America as they're transporting weapons, ammunition, hate literature. Ask the cops who are pulling them in whether we're winning the war. While, while Schmendrick is in Hawaii doing curls and playing golf. I saw an article. New strain of super gonorrhea puts disease at risk of becoming untreatable, Dr. Warns. Gonorrhea is at risk of becoming an untreatable disease due to the continuing emergence of antimicrobial resistance, says the doc. All right, so. All of the cases occurred in heterosexual patients from, the North, from Northern England. But some patients reported partners in other parts of the country. I love the word partner. In my day, a partner meant someone in business with you. Call someone your partner. What do you mean partner? Now, that's like a new word. It came out of the gay community, partner. You can't say husband or wife. It's to uh, partner. Gonorrhea is the second most prevalent bacterial sexually transmitted infection that is required to be reported with chlamydia being the first. Well, hey, I'm sorry, the CDC has to change those rules. You shouldn't have to report any disease. I think it's discriminatory to have to report any disease at all. I would say disband the CDC and eliminate reporting on any disease. You'd be in the same position we're in now. But here's the question. What's more untreatable, super gonorrhea or radical Islam? No, I, it's, it's actually, what does one thing have to do with the other? Well, they don't, really. But it says, new strain of super gonorrhea puts disease at risk of becoming untreatable. So I asked myself a question. What's more untreatable, super gonorrhea or radical Islam? Because right now with Dr. Obama in office, it looks to me like radical Islam's winning, like it's untreatable. Why? Because he won't use the antibiotics that we have. They're called cluster bombs. They're called bunker busting bombs. They're called cruise missiles. There's an awful lot of medicine that old Dr. O is not using against the gonorrhea of our time, the human gonorrhea. The gonococci in head scarves. That has a rich flavor to it, doesn't it? Oh, and you don't want to offend anyone's religion, do you? You want it to blow up your child's school? 
No, no, I don't really want that either, but I think you're being overly harsh. Your language is a little too harsh. Why don't you speak in measured tones, like everyone on television? Speak in measured tones, like on Fox News, where they're very polite. Although I don't agree with them, uh, when they discuss these things, it's done very politely. That's why we're losing the war, you moron. Because we don't need polite. You want me to start screaming and yelling and pounding the table? I can do that, too. But I'm controlling it. It's only the first day back from holiday. I didn't even want to be off last. Do you think I wanted to be off for Christmas? I didn't. I don't even know when Christmas was. When was it? What day of the week was it? I forgot, Robert. Friday? Friday. Came to visit the relatives. The young, young people try to cook a turkey. You think it's easy? Oh. I hope they're not listening. The good thing is, is they're not listening. They don't listen to the show. They're all out together. The family's out together, and I'm sweating behind the microphone. But I hope they're not listening. I really hope they're not doing an, uh, uh, a streaming show because I'll pay for this tonight. The white meat was dry. The, the black meat, well, the dark meat wasn't cooked at all. But look, it was the first turkey. Not it's everyone thinks it's easy to do. They think you just stick it in the oven. I did them for year in and year out. I know how to do a turkey. No, don't call, please. Whatever you do. Oh, Mike is a turkey recipe. That's not the point. It's called a filler. In between drilling you, I'm playing some nice Montavani music. Make believe I'm a dentist giving you root canal. I'm giving you political root canal, and every once in a while I pull a drill out, and I give you some filler music, like Montavani music. That was the turkey recipe, you get it? Don't call me back with a turkey recipe. <laughs> See, Robert understands me. That's why he's the producer there on the board. And I got Skype. I keep an eye on him now. I'm here in, in Beverly Hills. They're in Dallas. You got uh, Clint on the other side. I make him move the camera around so they can't hide. Clint, you're wearing an orange sweatshirt. I bought him a pizza today. I said, "Do so come on, let's celebrate. I'm having a corned beef sandwich in Beverly Hills. You could at least have a pizza. Did you, was it any good? Can they make pizza in Dallas? Are there any Greeks down there? Because the Greeks make the best pizza in the world, by the way. They're Greek pizza? No kidding. How to turn out Greeks make the best pizza? I don't understand it. I learned that when I lived in Marblehead, Massachusetts once, many, many decades ago. The Greeks knocked out a better pie. Thin, the crust, whatever. Don't don't call me now and tell me Jake's Pizzeria in Cleveland. That's not the point. It's light. It's lightness now. Lightness. Spatial lightness in between the drilling I'm about to give you. Are you ready for the next drill job? The dentist is back. Lean back in the chair now. Look up at the sky. Put the mask on. Because here comes the next drilling. <laughs> It's very much, it is very much like doing deep, deep tissue massage, the savage. <laughs> okay, mother of Paris suicide bomber, proud he had no victims. Did I read this one yet, Robert? This is a real, this one I read? No. No, I started it. Wait, wait, this is a screamer. Another one of our friends, another one of the, the moderate Muslims. Moderate Muslim, another moderate Muslim. The mother of the youngest of the Paris attackers. Attackers, you mass murdering pieces of shh. Who blew himself outside France's national stadium said she was proud that her son killed no one but himself and hopes to reclaim his remains for burial in Morocco. Don't talk to me about pig fat. Please don't bring that up again. Please don't bring up General, General Pershing. We've gone from General Pershing to General uh, Schmendrick in one generation. The woman identified as Fatima Hadfi, late Sunday, called a TV show in Belgium, Belgium, with wide viewership among the country's Moroccan community. Oh, that's so liberal. Moroccan community. What percent of that Moroccan community is radical? What percent of the Belgian Moroccan community is on welfare? What percent of the Belgian Moroccan community does nothing but sit around and hate everyone around them? On air, she said she had no idea why her 20-year-old son, Bilal, was radicalized. Blah, and none of them knew. He's a good boy. I was like, you know, he was a good boy. I don't know why the police shot him. He was walking to medical school. But what grade was he? In the sixth grade, he just knocked off a deli owner to steal something, but he was going to be a doctor. That's the same story. All of the boys are innocent. She did not call authorities to report his disappearance, but they found it anyway. Soon after police broke down their door and handcuffed her and her older son, forcing them to the floor of their home in Belgium. Oh, boo-hoo! Here's the liberal reporting of Associated Press. Forcing them.